and then Joshua wouldn't have had anyone to make his name off. So it would just be Fury on top of the mountain anyway. Yeah, well, Fury's the number one guy now, isn't he? Without a shadow of a doubt. He's the number then, one guy. Yeah, Tyson's number two, though. Yeah, he's there again having a pop, aren't you? <laughs> no, Fury, Tyson Fury is the number one heavyweight in world boxing at the moment. Number two, you'd have to say Wilder, wouldn't you? Or I'd Joshua? Until, until we see him fight again, I'd still say Wilder. Yeah, and you'd have to say Joshua because he's been licked. Easy. No, wait, 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 because I know you got comments on your... On your yeah. videos, mate. So there's gonna be some, there'll be some numpty out there that's gonna have a pop with me for what I just said. So here's why I say Wilder's above Joshua. I can live with Deontay Wilder losing to Tyson Fury the way he did more than I can live with Joshua losing to Ruiz the way he did. That's why I rank Wilder higher. That doesn't mean he's better. We need to see the next fight, and then we'll be able to know. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's uh. It's all, it all needs clarifying, doesn't it? We need, we need one champion, all these, to get credibility back for the sport, there's a lot. But it seems to me the more money that seems to be floating about, the bigger the lies. I mean, what about this this week? Did Eddie Hearn speak to Bob Arum? Did he speak to him probably about some fights and then slipped a couple of words in about the, the, the Fury Joshua fight? But that to him is the in negotiations. I mean, Frank Warren has denied it, hasn't he? Said so now they didn't talk. Uh, so I'll, I'll speak about it from the experience I've had in those sort of situations with her. When Hearn says, yeah, we've started talks, it could just be a text message. Are you guys up for Fury v Joshua? And Aaron might have just said, yeah, feels like a good fight. When the time is right, we'll make the fight. Yeah. And then Hearn would just say, yeah, we're in talks to make the fight happen now. And you're like, well, you're not really, are you? You just sent a few messages back and forth. Yeah. Eddie's not going to make the Joshua fight. It will be it will be John Skipper. Skipper will make the fight. Because then, so this is something I do know. Skipper has basically said to Hearn, there are certain fights I want you to stay the fuck away from because you're toxic in this situation. If AJ were to fight Wilder, Skipper makes the deal. If AJ were to fight Fury, Skipper makes the deal. Yeah. Essentially, any of those big fights that need to happen, like a Golovkin, Skipper will make the deal, not Eddie Hearn. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Eddie Hearn, he's upset that many of them, hasn't he? Yeah, and there's a lesson, there's a lesson to be learned from it, right? In the corporate world, and the corporate world is full of very sensitive, insecure people. You can't burn your bridges. You just can't. Everyone remembers. Do you not burn your bridges in your job, Terry? Mate, fucking I've made a career out of it. What, a burning burn. them? Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you don't even mean to do it. You you just, you, you know, it's like you, Russ, right? You're there being honest, right? And you get emails from certain people involved in boxing threatening but you're just being yourself. You don't mean to burn those bridges. You didn't yeah. even know you were burning the bridges. Yeah, yeah, a bit like you. Yeah, you know, people, here's what, here's what I, I, I live by this motto. Tempers are short, memories are long. Yeah, yeah, that's true, that, that's true. Is that, that's, that's, that's good wisdom, that, mate. That's like something I'd expect from Peter Fury to say to me. <laughs> yeah, well, remember, remember, Russ, you and I did 10 years in Lindo. <laughs> we had a lot of wisdom to share. <laughs> yeah, you got your your funny yo. <laughs> but uh, mo moving on then, right? Let moving on to the show. Last night, the Scott Quig, Scott Quig, against John O'Carroll. John Who was the B side? I'm saying it was Scott, Scott Quig was the B side. In his yeah, hometown. Was, Quig showed up to Salah's name. That's all he did. He showed up to Salah's name. Do you know what that fight reminded me of, Porky? Go on. Do you when Sugar Ray Leonard fought terrible Terry Norris? Yeah, he got knocked out. Yeah, but if you remember in that fight, you could see Sugar Ray knew what he should be doing, right? And yeah. you could see that it was all happening a second after he thought it. Yeah. So he'd take a left hook, and then he'd block the 
shot after it already landed and you're like, ah oh, man, this is hard to watch. I think he had a lot of that with Scott Quick yesterday where Scott Quick knew exactly what to do. He wasn't he wasn't in there with a more skillful, better guy. He was just in there with a guy who who hadn't had the crap beaten out of him since he was fourteen. You're right. I think I think you're exactly right because I'm, as you know, I'm a big Terry Norris fan, and I always say that Kel Brook could have been our Terry Norris. That's that's what I always say. But uh, but yeah, mate. I mean, Ray Leonard. Yeah, I agree with that. A bit like when he fought Hector Camacho. You know, his body wasn't allowing him to do what his brain was telling him. And that was straight after, uh, well, not straight after. It was his next fight after Terry Norris, but it was about six years later. But, yeah, that, he'd had a two-year layoff, hadn't he? Uh, or, or just yeah. over a year left when he fought after G the Duran, the third Duran fight. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you're right. Do you think that's happened to Quig? He, he knew what to do, but his body wouldn't do it. Yeah, look, Quick could be watching that fight back and he'll tell you exactly what he was trying to do and he's like, but I just couldn't do it. And yeah. you know what, I, I say this about boxers, there comes a point when you've just used up your overdraft. Yeah. You've burned through your bank balance, you've used up your overdraft and you're just on zero. There's nothing left, there's nothing you can draw on and then you've just got to step away from it. What's Scott Quigg going to do now because boxing's been his life, hasn't it? I hope to God the kid retires. He might turn out to be a good trainer. He yeah. might, he's, he's got that sort of thing about him where he might turn out to be a good trainer, but he's, he's done as a boxer. Yeah, but Clinton Wood's right. He doesn't train professionals because he believes that professionals are not as dedicated as he was and will that frustrate Scott Quigg if he's getting somebody just having a day off where they don't fancy it or coming late or how's he going to cope? Yeah. Do you know what happens over time Porky? You just you just find the right people they'll come to you. If, you. if you're a good trainer the right people will come to you. The ones that can't hack it won't last anyone. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably right there mate. You're probably right. It's uh, it's going to be interesting times for Scott Quigg, isn't it? But the show as a whole, uh, what did you think to it? We'll uh, have a, what did you think to the show as a whole? Obviously, we'll talk about the main fights because we'll be here all day for going on about the ones at the beginning. Yeah, let's. Sure, mate, the only fights I saw were the were the Cullen fights. Yeah, I've cut from what I was here. Well, be yeah. back back up a little bit. You've got Robbie Davis Jr. Right. A top 20 guy on box rack fighting a guy ranked 262 and he went points with him. So, should Robbie Davis Jr. be getting that guy out of there? Mm, but that's assuming Robbie Davis Jr. is a power puncher, right? He's, he's never been a power puncher, so I'm not surprised. Look, Lewis Ritson ran over and reversed, handbrake turned over and did whatever he wanted to the lad. So, and I don't rate Ritson that high. Oh, yeah. That's just awful, mate. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, well, Robbie Davis Jr., he got a win and he moves to 20 and 2, so I'm pleased for him because I like him. Jack Cullen, he knocked Thomas Andreas Reynoso out, who's no great shakes, ranked under the 95. I mean, who's matching this? Christian Church is his, Eddie's new matchmaker, isn't he now? Now, and then you've got, did you see the Anthony Fowler fight? No, I didn't. I was having food at that point. Have you, have you heard about it? No, was it any good? Well, the guy had uh, the wrong boots on, apparently, and it only lasted one round. Uh, he was ranked 687 on box rec. They don't even know his proper date of birth from Ghana. You know, like them I have to pick up from airport and take them for blood tests, and they're always disorganised and... <laughs> Just humble, oh, nice people, yeah. So they've flown him over for Anthony the Machine Fowler, who's now 29 year old. 29 in here tomorrow. He needs to get a move on. And so that were Pony, but they got him, they got Fowler out there, didn't they? But shocking. And then we've got Yui. Yui's new style against Pavel Sauer. Sauer. You say it twice now, they're copying Mickey Ward. What? 
copying it, aren't they? Mate, I know we were messaging back and forth through that fight, and I like this. I really like Huey Fury. I like the fact that he's had a really old school career where he's already, I mean, he's been battle tested already. But, and I've said this to you before, he always looks like a guy that doesn't want to box. I can't explain it, but when you're in the gym and you watch lads sparring and you watch lads working, you know who really wants to be there. You also know who doesn't really want to be there because there's a lack of intensity to it. But I enjoy watching Huey because he always looks like he always looks like he's doing the right thing. He cruises through all sessions, you know, in gym, but he doesn't say anything. You don't get an out from him. He's I've been sat next to Huey, mate, for an hour and a half, and not had a, and not said said anything. And 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 other people are sat there. He's just quiet. He'd just be quiet in between sessions on his phone. He doesn't speak. He's just he's very shy. I don't know if it's I think he's a bit shy. Yeah, but he just don't engage and he just doesn't have a lot to say. And Savannah's like that. They're just quiet kids. It don't mean to say that they can't fight, does it? But I just think he's a natural. When I see it, some of the stuff he does in in there, I mean, some of his footwork's unbelievable, isn't it? But if he can, well. He he has everything. Like you look at the, if you look at it as like you know, all the different components of a good boxer, he has all of them. But when you're a heavyweight, and I, I've, I've learned this from coaching big guys, you can't be shy and retiring as a big guy. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't you can't be shy and retiring as a big guy. You just can't be. You have to be a guy that walks into that ring and you go. I'm the biggest dog in this building right now. That's how heavyweights think. And that's why, they, that's why they're able to do what they do in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. And Yui don't... Do you think Yui don't do his PR as good as other people? So, so it's not a PR thing. It's a, it's a mindset thing. So, Huey Fury, in his own gym when he's training in camp, should be the dominant person in there. Yeah. It's like when you watch Joshua working, and I, and I have this from people on the inside, Joshua owns every square inch of any gym he works in. Because that's how that's how the big men think. The same with Wilder. Like, yeah. you know, it's not necessarily that they're loud, but it's, you know they're walking around there like anyone that wants it can get it. And I don't know if Huey thinks about that on a day-to-day -day basis, which was, and that makes it hard when you then come into a fight against someone who does think like that. Yeah. But listen, I. They said something really interesting. I think it was Johnny Nelson said it. I'd like to see Huey Fury just go away and spar. Yeah, he, instead of sparring in Manchester, you mean, you mean go abroad? Where does he go to uh, Holland? He's been no, over. No, like literally, if I was Huey Fury now, I'd pack a bag and I'd say, I'd say to Peter, I'm going to go away for a few months. And here are the people I'm going to spot. Jerome Miller, Deontay Wilder, Gerald Washington. I'll go down and... I mean, let, let, let me just spot Tyson like the old days. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Just go back and get that feeling. Be around other big guys and just see how they do it. See how they do it mentally. Because I think he's got it physically. I don't doubt that for a second. It's that psycho the psychology of it. Like, I'm never convinced that he could dominate at heavyweight. No. Yeah, I should be. Yeah. Well, we're going to see how he's only 25, isn't he? Yeah, but we can't keep saying he's only this. There's other kids who look, Dubois not even 25. Yeah. And he's Dubois he dominating. Dubois beats Dubois? Not in, not in a million years. Don't you think Yui beats Dubois? No. Not now, no? Nah. And you know what? It's not even a technical thing. If Dubois, Mr. C can destroy. Like, you know what I just talked about before, about dominating the space? Yeah. And Dubois the master of that, and he's not a big talker. Yeah, but he's, he, he, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, he's, he's a bit like you, yeah. very quiet, isn't he? Yeah, very, very quiet, very, very shy. But when he walks into that ring, whatever's in front of him is getting torn in half. Yeah. And that's all we want to see from Huey. I'm a big Huey fan. I'm a big Peter Fury fan. I just want, I want that mental aspect of it to to come out. 
yeah 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 well that's opie 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 uh yui uh that that comes out and you know a bit of nastiness bit of spite you know in his personality as well things like that and yeah. uh but like i said some people are just quiet aren't they you know yeah. so but what did you think to uh the quig fight in general then getting off of you we onto the Scott Quigg, what do you think? Sorry, 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 Zach Parker. Right, you know Zach Parker's 19 and 0 now, and he's gone from 59 to 16 this morning on Box right now. Zach Parker. The word is that if Billy Joe loses to Canelo, right, and, the, and Canelo disses the belt, Billy Joe will fight Zach Parker in, as, to come back. So that's the safety net for her, isn't it? Now, or Zach Parker gets a big payday against Canelo. Life changing money. Do you think that's Hearn's holding the belt hostage in the WBO? Uh, not really, because A, Canelo's a big What and Callum yeah, yeah. Smith gets it? No, so so you have to go back and be be honest, right? Just take Billy Joe's career. As an amateur, Billy Joe never had a defining fight. In the Olympics, it was set up for him and Andre to box each other, and both managed to choke. So they never got that fight. Yeah. Andre wanted that fight at one sixty. At one point, he said, "I'll fight." Andre's wanted the Billy Joe fight for years because they've always been compared with each other. They're about the same age, I think. Or well, they're definitely the same generation as amateurs. And so Billy Joe never had a big fight in the amateurs. And he's never had a defining fight in the pro. And people talk about the Lemieux fight. But Lemieux was Taylor Mage from. Lemieux is the guy that falls over his front foot when he punches. He's not really good with a jab. His footwork's terrible. He just relies on having a powerful left hook, which is Taylor Mage for someone like Billy Joe. Yeah. Billy Joe is, what, 31 years old? Yeah. So let, let, let's just let's just take the span of his career. Since Billy Joe turned over, the Gales turned over, won world titles, had the final fight, retired. George Groves has turned over, won world titles, had big, big fight, retired. Anthony Joshua learned how to box, won an Olympic gold, won world championships, had the final fight. These 12 years, Billy Joe has been a pro, well, 11 and a bit. Why hasn't he done that? He was the most talented out of all of them. Yeah, he was, Why hasn't yeah. Billy Joe done that? So, so now he's going to go and fight Canelo, who's probably the best boxer of his generation by some distance. He's going to go and fight that guy at Canelo's favoured weight. Not Billy Joe's favoured weight, Canelo's favoured weight. And remember... This, if this fight does happen, for Canelo, it's just another fight. For Billy Joe, it's the biggest fight of his life. You know? Have you yeah. got the right team around you to cope with Canelo? I don't know. It, it, it just looks like too little, too late. These are the fights Billy Joe should have been having four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true, that, yeah. So, so that, that, that's really my take. As for Zach Parker, Zach Parker lost to Daryl Williams and no one will ever debate that with me. He lost to Daryl Williams. He shouldn't be in this position because he was gifted that British title. And it looks like the Southlands and, and the Hearns are clearly in cahoots to try and get this guy somewhere. But he's, he's not a guy for me. And why Frank Warren let Daryl Williams go and fight with someone else to show like that is also beyond me. But you know, boxing does a lot of messed up things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, you're probably right, mate. It's uh, it's an hard one for Billy Joe, and it he's he's not gonna be able to knock him out because Kovalev hit him with everything, and he didn't budge him, did he? Right. So Billy Joe can't knock him out. Can Billy Joe outbox him? Maybe, but is he gonna no, win round? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, we have no evidence of that, right? But Billy Joe hasn't had to put his skills against someone as good as he is. No, I suppose, yeah. Well, David Lemieux was not Canelo, is he? David Lemieux's not Eubank Jr. 
Eubank Junior. You know I mean? Eubank Junior. Some people I know had you him winning. Yeah. Well, the second half of that fight. The saying he won the six rounds and Billy Joe won five rounds and one were drawn. You know, they say they get a drawn round earlier and Billy Joe pulled away then up to halfway point and then he won every round, didn't he? Billy Joe tired, didn't he? Experience got him through that, you know. Yeah, mate, and, that, and I think that's my point. My point is actually, can Billy Joe Saunders fight the 12 rounds against Canelo? Because if he can't, he might just get ground into the dirt. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, people are going to say now Billy Joe's undefeated and we all said this about Tyson and this and that and that he'd lose against Vladimir and that. Maybe Billy might just have a mega elite performance in him that hadn't come out yet. We don't know, do we? We don't, but we have no evidence to suggest that. We don't even know if that's in him or not. Do you see what yeah. I mean? Like, this is why you need defining fights at every stage of your career because then you can show that you've stepped up. And I'm, I'm still there going, okay, there's the Andy Lee fight. I know people refer to that. But, but where, where do you rank Andy Lee really? Not that, I mean, he doesn't have those defining fights either. Andy Lee were like middleweight, wasn't he? he been fighting Jackson not long before that, wasn't he? Yeah, that's my point. So, so I don't know. The, the Billy Joe situation, I don't know who's had the worst career, him or Kel Brook. At least Kel's had big defining fights, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kel Brooks had free pay per view. Yeah. Bill, Billy's not had a pay per view yet, is he? I don't think. What, well, William Monroe Jr.? Oh, well, that was a terrible fight. Look, Billy Joel, right? This is how I look at it. Going through his career. Uh, let's have a look. When he beat Eubank Jr., British Commonwealth and European defences, split decision. Then he fought. Johan Bloyer, 17, 27 and 2. I mean, shocking guy. And, that, and then he's jumped in with Andy Leaf at world title, middleweight. And then he fought Akavov, stunk place out, some said he lost. I had him winning by one round. Willie Monroe, uh, beat him on points. David Dimio did him on points. Charles Adamu, after that, 40 odd year old. I mean, he's been in with Frotch. And then he's fought Shafa Isufi for vacant £168. And then Kosar has done him, didn't he? KO'd him. So yeah, it, it's stop start, isn't it, Terry? Stop start, isn't it? Yeah, you're not getting into the Hall of Fame with that record at all. He'll not. He'll not, no. No, he won't get Hall of Fame on this, would he? Yeah. Hey, listen, he could turn up on the night, school Canelo, we could all say, wow. He could do a Carl Zaggy, Jeff Lacey, could he? Man, and I'd be the happiest person on earth if he did that. Yeah, I, I really would. I would. I'd like to see yeah. him do that because I don't want to look back in 20 years and say, oh, what about Billy Joe Saunders? What he could have done? Do you know what I mean? Like people say about... Uh, Macklin, Matthew Macklin were tipped, one for greatness. I know he got robbed for a world title, didn't he? But Matthew Macklin must look back and think there were a few wrong turnings he made that stopped him, you know, being up there. Cause he, he was I just tipped. Don't think was ever a middleweight. He you was know, tipped to do massive things, wasn't he, Macklin? He was a really, he was a really, really good amateur. So I know he won the ABA's like Boxing International. He was a good amateur. Like, if he was around now. He'd be in GB. Yeah, he would, yeah. He just wasn't a middleweight for me. Like, 154, I think he could have won world title. Just 160 would look like a step too far because he's not a big guy. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, but I just think that I don't want Billy Joe to be like that. Forget how, how, what goes on outside of boxing. As regards boxing, 
uh, I think that Billy Joe he's won everything hasn't he he don't get it he he could do what he wants you know if you had Billy but, but would Billy Joe be the same fighter if he trained like he should do do you think he'd be he'd be unbeatable if he did yeah yeah well I think that Billy Joe Saunders is giving me a chance of beating Canelo but is it, will he get the decision they could scream robbery they might get two out of it they could get mileage out of it if it's, if there's controversy couldn't they Eddie's got all platforms hasn't he if Eddie needs to get something out there that's controversial and get public backing, he just calls all the YouTube friends in, doesn't he? And he just push it. I mean, look at this blitz with Joshua. But anyway, we're getting off subject here. So, Zach Parker fights Billy Joe or Canelo. They've moved that in position, haven't they? But what did you think to the fight? Is Zach Parker any good? No, so I remember, I remember Zach Parker. He boxed in a tournament called the Harringay Box Cup. I remember the, the, the Zachary Parker. And he wasn't that special then. Like, he just... He's managed to box at 168 and box no one that we know. Think about this. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, Daryl Williams. Only Daryl. He, ne he, never, he, ne he never fought their own riches. Split decision, he wasn't it? Fought. Some said he lost. Hey, he got... He had one arm, Porky. How are you going to win a fight with one arm? I know. I know, but... They, just, they were never going to give it to Daryl. Daryl could have knocked him out. They would have picked him back up, let him have five minutes to recover, and go, mate, go again. Yeah. He, uh... So he's beat Daryl Williams, but we're saying you lost that. That's it. No, and not now, all of a sudden, look how he's in the mix now. I mean, how messed up is that? I mean, he's had a lottery ticket, had he, now, him? Yeah, he's laughing. He's had a lottery ticket. So the people that are looking after Zach, Zach Parker, they are not people. They are not just people. They are super people. <laughs> but, but here's something that people aren't thinking about. 